you think of New York, you probably think of places like this. Giant billboards and a slew of human activity. But New York City also has a wilder side. The city's 8 million residents live alongside more than 600 different species of animals. And in this series, we're going to be getting to know some of the wilder residents of the Big Apple. This is Wild New York. My name is Ben, and I'm an amateur naturalist and animal lover. Oh, and there he goes. Join me and my friend Katie as we journey around New York City and discover a little bit more about the wildlife that shares our home. Woohoo! New York City has a lot of nicknames, but few are more fitting than Concrete Jungle. This apt moniker reinforces the need for serious survival skills, and few animals embody this better than the Procyon loader, more commonly known as the North American raccoon. A lot of people are familiar with these masked mammals, but they do keep a few secrets. For example, what makes them such masters of survival? Do they have a social life? And are they a danger to pets and humans? We're going to answer these questions and more today. Raccoons are the most widespread animal in New York State, found everywhere from secluded forests to urban centers. They can live in almost any habitat, including urban and residential areas, deciduous forests, parklands, and marshes. Raccoons are most recognizable by their ringed tails and mask-like facial fur. Adults weigh approximately 9 to 30 pounds and are on average 28 to 41 inches in length, with their tail accounting for approximately one-third of their length. Although raccoons are generally solitary creatures, they sometimes share a home range with their siblings. Outside of the city, a home range can be as far as 18 miles. Inside of the city, well, they tend to stick to about a one mile radius. Raccoons reach sexual maturity at one year old and usually mate in the late winter or early spring. They give birth to between two and five babies, called kits, per litter approximately two months after mating. After 8 to 12 weeks, the kits begin to leave their den with their mother. The young usually disperse to find their own territory the following spring, but some set out on their own as soon as autumn. Male and female raccoons are actually pretty difficult to tell apart. Although males on average are larger than females, there are no distinguishing markings or characteristics to let you know. One way to be sure, if they've got little ones in tow, they're probably female. An adult male raccoon is called a boar, while adult females are called a sow. Despite their well-earned reputation as nocturnal, raccoons can be seen any time of day. In urban environments, they tend to adapt their schedules to whenever there is the least activity around food sources. Their unique hands lend them incredible dexterity. It's a common misconception that they have opposable thumbs. It's actually their long fingers that help them get into mischief. It's these hands that give the raccoon its name. In fact, the word raccoon comes from an old Powhatan term. It was found recorded in John Smith's list of Powhatan words as Arokun. That's John Smith, the colonizer and former governor of Jamestown. Hey. Etymologists have identified its origin in a Proto-Algonquin word, Arokunet, meaning one that rubs, scrubs, or scratches with its hands. The scientific name you'll remember is Procyon loader. Loader comes from the Latin, meaning washer, a behavior often seen as raccoons will douse their food in water prior to eating. When they're not near a source of water, raccoons can often be seen rubbing or scrubbing their food, a curious action unique to their species. This helps the raccoon identify and clean its food prior to chowing down. The raccoon is an omnivorous and opportunistic eater, with its diet determined heavily by its environment. Common foods include fruits, plants, nuts, berries, insects, rodents, frogs, eggs, and crayfish. Raccoons are not experts at hunting prey, but they do manage to occasionally catch a young mouse, rat, or squirrel. In an urban environment, the animal often sifts through garbage for food. Raccoons live in the middle of the food web, with their diet consisting of more than 70% plants and invertebrates like bugs and grubs. This makes them wary of new sounds, smells, and bright lights, so let's see if we can observe some in the wild. So, raccoons are generally solitary when they reach adulthood, except for during mating season. We're a little past that right now, but 
there are a couple of young adolescents hanging out in this bush. I'm hoping if we give them enough space, they're going to come back out and say hello. If you've ever wanted to see Ben not know what he's talking about, today is your lucky day. These two stayed safely hidden away in the underbrush. Hoping to avoid detection, Ben is removing his backpack. Its straps and zippers can make noise that will alert sharp ears to his presence. Don't mind me, I'll just be back here struggling with the camera. Raccoons aren't great climbers, but right now this is his best place to flee to. I thought he was going to try to come right past you down there on the steps. We can see him there. Yeah, he's making a run for the stairs. Content with their exposure, or perhaps eager to tell the family about their big break, this raccoon hightails it out of here. He's gonna go back and find one of his little burrows. So raccoons are opportunistic, which means anything in their environment that is edible, they're gonna go after it. And in urban environments like this, trash cans and food scraps make for a really easy source of fat and other nutrition. And just like their front paws are being extremely dexterous, their back paws can also grip very well, which allows him to hang on the back of the trash can here and <laughs> dunk his entire front body down inside of it. Sounds like he's got him some chips. It's rude to interrupt celebrities at a meal, but in our defense, the mask-like markings made it difficult to know just who this raccoon was. Come on, let's take a look and let's see what he was going after. Classic Lay's, a solid choice, but I prefer barbecue. Oh my god, he ate that entire bag of potato chips. Now that we've met the raccoons of New York, it's time to ask the most important question. How do they fit into the ecosystem? New Yorkers have few yards for them to terrify, but we do have a lot of community gardens, and even more trash. What's the best way for us to live alongside them? Raccoons' heavy reliance on plants and bugs in their diet can make them a terror for yards. But in New York, the largest point of contact between humans and raccoons is around trash. Raccoons love trash so much, they're even willing to share it with other animals, like skunks and opossums. But this creates an unhealthy balance between humans and raccoons, with the latter relying on the former as a major food source. In captivity, raccoons can live as long as 20 years, but in the wild, their typical lifespan is only three. Extreme weather, hunting, and traffic in their home range all contribute to high mortality rates. It's not uncommon for half of the young born to a pair to make it to one year old, but like many animals lower down the food web, studies have shown that raccoons in areas with higher mortality rates produce larger broods. By far, the largest cause of death among raccoons is disease. Maladies like distemper and rabies can spread rapidly through populations and reach epidemic levels. In 2011, the New York Department of Health vaccinated 500 raccoons and released them in and around Central Park. This effectively eradicated the disease for eight years, with the first documented cases emerging in six specimens during the early months of 2019. Remember, always keep a safe distance whenever you're observing wild animals. Never feed wildlife. And make sure to dispose properly of all of your trash. If you can follow these steps, we'll bring New York City closer into harmony with nature. And be sure the Big Apple stays a wild New York.